Appearing primitive by modern standards, and even when compared to the NX class which had preceded them, the Daedalus class nonetheless represented a significant step forward in starship design when she entered service, and very much established the classical layout for starships used by Starfleet down to the present day. Measuring in at a length of 140 meters, 53 meters wide, and 35 tall, the Daedalus class was armed with four phased energy weapons, two in the spherical command hull, with the rest on the service hull, to provide the best possible coverage of the ship's surroundings. The Daedalus was also armed with two weapons launchers in the command hull. The ships held a crew of 120, and they were capable of traveling at warp factor 5.5 maximum, and had a cruising speed of warp factor 4. The Daedalus class can trace its origins directly to the Meteor class cruiser, which Starfleet, the United Earth Starfleet, began taking delivery of during the latter half of the Romulan War. Better armed than its successor, though otherwise very similar visually, the Meteor was the first ship to take advantage of an asymmetrical warp field to permit greater power efficiency at high warp. In essence, the Meteor, which had begun planning pre-war, achieved better energy efficiency to achieve the same warp factor as the larger NX class, allowing the ship to have a much smaller and more reliable fusion engine rather than the less safe matter-antimatter reactor that Starfleet had been forced to use in the NX class to generate the necessary power. This was done by projecting a small forward warp bubble ahead of the ship's main warp field. This had the effect, much like a delta wing on an aircraft, of breaking up the subspace laminar flow around the warp field and preventing the formation of subspace eddies behind the ship, which also slowed the vessel down due to drag. The Meteor had been meant as a general purpose vessel to replace the older Neptune class ships in the patrol and defense role, while also being able to fight if necessary or conduct planetary exploration missions as required. However, the nearly completed design was altered when war broke out and the ship would complete with an impressive array of weapons, though this was at the expense of much of its range, crew comfort, and non-combat capability. Once it became clear that the war would end in a coalition victory over the Romulans, Starfleet began experimenting with the idea of building a new class of ships to the same standard as the originally intended meteor design. Once the war was negotiated to an end via subspace radio, Starfleet was given permission to cancel the final 25 meteors and build the ships instead to a new design, what would become the Daedalus. The Daedalus class ships began entering service from 2162 onwards. Ten ships were in service by the time that the Federation Charter had been ratified by the members of the Coalition of Planets. These ships, alongside most of the former UE Starfleet to survive the war, would become the first ships of the United Federation of Planets Combined Starfleet. The ships under, under construction still were completed as the first new-built ships for the young organization. In total, 53 Daedalus-class ships would be built in two primary batches. The initial 25 ships would become the Batch 1, with following vessels being built to a slightly different Batch 2 standard. The major difference between the two batches was that the Batch 2 featured increased armament at the expense of some scientific facilities and crew comfort, as well as energy shielding, a first for an Earth-built ship. Daedalus-class ships served throughout the final quarter of the 22nd century and into the 23rd. The ships would see heavy usage, with many serving on long missions exploring and mapping new systems, making contact with many new species, civilizations, and finding all manner of wonders in deep space. Almost half of the members of the class would be lost, the causes of many ships' loss being not fully understood for decades, even centuries after their disappearance. The fate of several missing ships is still not known today. Such were the dangers of exploration at this early time of the Federation's history. 
By the 2190s, severe microfractures discovered in the holes of several members of the class caused the entire Daedalus fleet to be grounded. After investigation, it was determined that the design had not anticipated the hard use that the ships would be subjected to, and the structural members were not suitably stiff to resist the stresses they had been subjected to during decades of hard use. While a few ships were, were repaired, the cost in time, materials, and dock time was considerable, and was judged as not worth it given the age of the class and the numbers of new designs in service. Many ships were simply scrapped, while a few non-refitted ships were used as training and test ships for some years. The handful of ships which did receive the refit would serve into the 2110s before they too were scrapped. Today, the USS Horizon, a Batch 2 Daedalus class, is preserved as a museum ship in the Starfleet Museum's orbital annex above the city of San Francisco, Earth. While hardly the most visually attractive starship class to ever serve, the Daedalus nonetheless represented a major step forward in technology over the Earth designs which had preceded it. The ships gave very good service over decades of hard use and played a vital role in the early days of the Federation's history, earning their place among the truly iconic designs which would come later and build off of its legacy. As a few quick notes, the dimensions I listed for the Daedalus differ from the quote-unquote official dimensions quite a bit. But at 105 meters officially, the ship is tiny, and I don't see how you could fit any serious capability inside, especially as the Daedalus is intended as a cruiser. So I upped the size a bit to allow more internal volume for the stuff that a ship needs. Engines, crew quarters, sensors, weapons, that sort of thing. My ulterior motive of this upscaling is that the Daedalus is my next project in Minecraft, and when I tried to build the ship at its official length, it seemed far too small to me and incredibly limited. So I played around with dimensions and arrived at the length I listed above. Really, the canon official length of 105 meters, as far as I can tell, comes from a single magazine and is possibly just a wild guess in the dark. So I'm going to say that my 140 meters is as official as that likely wild guess based on a basic model someone had seen. Your mileage may vary, and as with most things, you're free to disagree and have your own headcanon. Star Trek is definitely vague enough that everybody can have their own opinions about what stuff is and isn't.